All right, what is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? Guilty Gear. We're going to hop right into it. Revelator made a goddamn mistake. They released on the same day as Odin Sphere Remake. I can't pull myself away from that game to play Guilty Gear. <laughs> I could barely pull myself away from that game to sit down and record this. Like, I need to, because I need, I want to talk about E3. I want to talk about various other things that are, you know, not E3 related that I'm going to talk about in this video. I need to get started on Guilty Gear for a numer for numerous reasons. Uh, I cannot pull myself away from Odin Sphere. That game is so fun. It's, like, if you've never played a Vanillaware game, please do yourself a favor and play one of them. Doesn't, doesn't even matter which one it is. Dragon's Crown, Miramasa, Odin Sphere. I think those are the, those are the three games that I have personally played. I want to say there's another one in there somewhere uh, that I am forgetting, and that's terrible of me. But I have loved all of them, all of them. Dragon's Crown, especially. I would say Dragon's Crown out of these three is my favorite so far. Uh, I have not beaten Odin Sphere though. There's like I think there's six, seven, maybe eight different campaigns in Odin Sphere, and I am only on the second one. So, who knows if that'll change, but Drag out of Miramasa and Dragon's Crown, Dragon's Crown definitely takes the cake as my favorite game of Vanillaware. Um, unfortunately, it is very much a multiplayer bait. No, no, it's not. You can play it solo, and you can definitely enjoy it solo, but it is a lot more fun played multiplayer, and I don't know if there's still a community playing that game online, so it would be kind of a shame to miss out on that, and that is a big part of the appeal for me, was the multiplayer component and playing with other people. Um, but yeah, like I, I fucking I love me some Vanillaware, and their artwork is goddamn gorgeous. Their gameplay, even though their gameplay is pretty similar between games, like I can't everything that I learned playing Miramasa carries over into playing Odin Sphere. Like I played this because I went on vacation, and so obviously you know there was about probably all told between driving there, driving back, and all the driving around the area in general, I probably spent somewhere between 25 to 30 hours in a car thus there's a lot of time to be playing either my nintendo ds or my playstation vita i played a shit ton of miramasa rebirth in that time i have gotten very very goddamn good at that game and basically everything i was doing in miramasa carries over somewhat there are obviously differences they're not the exact same game odin sphere has a lot more special moves going for it which is awesome it basically makes it deeper gives you more options that's never a bad thing in an action game um but in terms of like normal normal movement and normal moves available to you they're very very similar so i kind of find myself outside of you know various special move functionality i'm kind of doing the same juggles uh that i was doing in miramasa i'm kind of doing the same movement and tactics that i was doing in miramasa so it's kind of they are what you learn in one game will serve you well in any other vanillaware game which you know part of that is good part of that if you enjoy the vanillaware action process then you're going to enjoy it across all their games but if you don't then that's going to be a problem because it's very similar throughout all their games that being said again goddamn love me some odin sphere uh i played it i started out on hard mode which is the hardest difficulty available at the moment i'm sure it is because in miramasa you have i think three difficult no you have two difficulties available to you and then if you beat the game on the harder difficulty you unlock an even harder difficulty that you can then play through after that i don't know if it's the same thing here because i did not unlock a new difficulty after beating the first campaign um but i did i tried to start on the hardest difficulty possible and it actually is pretty difficult right up until the point that i realized how incredibly fucking good potions were i wasn't really using them for a while i was relying very much on just my special moves and my normal moves and I was kind of just ignoring potions unless I needed them for defensive purposes. But then I started throwing some of the offensive potions because my inventory was starting to get crowded and I needed to get rid of some shit. So I started throwing some of them. And it was like, holy shit. This, if I can get the enemies stuck in the area of effect of this potion, this is going to do, like, way exponentially more damage than my regular offense has been doing. So once I figured out just abuse the living shit out of potions, everything fell into place and I am just steamrolling everything. And it looks awesome. It's beautiful the entire time. There is still some challenge in certain bosses. Uh, for instance, what's... Well, oh, God damn it. Was it her, I think... I can't remember what her first name was. 
Anyway, she's just a Red Riding Hood looking mother of a slutty Red Riding Hood look. I believe if I understand her character model correctly, she's showing a little bit of underboob. She's showing that that abdomen. She got stockings that's showing off a little bit of thigh. Like, girl, you can let's talk, you and I. So, I, like I said, slutty Red Riding Hood. Um, she kicked my ass the first time I fought that boss fight. She ruined my shit uh and there's been a few other boss fights that i've kind of struggled a little bit with so it's definitely not just a cakewalk the entire way through but it's got the right amount of challenge where the challenge should be i guess if i wanted to say that properly about an action game anyway i'm not really here to talk about odin Sphia, even though i could for ages because it's so beautiful my i do it, there are problems with it uh there's some backtracking potentially necessary as far as I can tell, there's like, you're basically revisiting the same areas in the n newer campaign. So you're going to be going through kind of, you know, fighting the same enemies with the n different characters, that kind of thing that may get repetitive and old uh, fairly quickly. I know that's, that's what happened with Miramasa with me. I didn't completely finish everything available because um, basically in Miramasa, you have three endings for, you have two characters who each have three endings. To get the first ending, you just have to beat the game normally with that character. And then, once you do beat the game normally, you unlock a special uh, sword that you can equip. And then, to get the second ending for the character, you have to then go through with the other character, beat the game with them, get their sword. And then, to get the second ending for both of the characters, they both have to equip those two swords in their inventory and use them to beat the final boss again. Um, and then, after that, the third ending is basically getting every forging every single sword in the game and using the most powerful sword in the game to again beat the end and get the third and last ending for that character and you have to do it with both characters so in order to get to the level necessary to be able to equip that last sword you basically have to do 90 percent of the content available in the game which means you're basically refighting bosses over and over because you have the regular story based stuff then you have these challenge dungeons that you unlock uh through various means throughout the game and in every single one of the, and those challenge dungeons either feature a fight against a vast number of normal enemies buffed up beyond what the, you know what they ever were when you fought them and you have to fight through that you know waves of those enemies or you have to refight a boss that you've already fought before in your own campaign or it is a fight against a boss from the other character's campaign so essentially if you do all of that with one character and then you do all of it with the other character you're essentially fighting the same bosses three or four times potentially even more just depending and the moment i quit was when i went i finished off the f the very last boss fight i had to do to do every single boss fight on one of the characters i finished them off and then i hopped on the other character and started working on them and I immediately went into fighting the same exact boss. And I was like, alright. So I just got this twice in a row. Fantastic. Let's just move forward. And then I fought the same exact boss a third time. In a row. Now granted, that was obviously just bad luck of the draw. If I had known beforehand, that's, you know, I would have gone in sequence the same exact boss three times in a row. I would never have done it. It was just bad luck. But the moment that happened, I turned off the game. I didn't even finish the third boss fight. I just turned it off and I haven't picked it up since. And so that is kind of a problem is there is a decent degree of repetitiveness and you're going to be refighting some bosses fairly often. I want to say I have fought one of the, probably one of the worst designed bosses. <laughs> Motherfuckers is Robotnik on steroids. If you've played Odin Sphere, you, know, you have to know exactly who I'm talking about when I say Robotnik on steroids. I think I've fought that guy four times now, whereas I, I don't think, I think the only, I've, the only other boss that I've fought close to that is twice, and I think there's only two of them so far, but still, like I said, it's just, ugh, refighting bosses is one of the worst things that tends to occur in action games, and it happens a lot in the Vanillaware games, so if I had to pick one thing to actually legitimately gripe about throughout vanillaware games it is that you do a lot of refighting bosses in their games um but anyway like i said we're not here to talk about that i also played a lot of pokemon on my trip god damn 
you really realize how flawed the originals were. Like, because everybody wants to talk about, you know, the gameplay, everything about Pokemon has not evolved in any way, shape, or form since the original iterations. Like, come on, man, how are people still buying into this, etc., etc.? Then you go back and you play the original games, and it's like, holy shit. So much has changed for the better since these games. Um, Because, like, so basically when I was playing through them, I made the decision to not you basically if i have ever used a pokemon before in one of a pre in a previous game whatever version of that game it was didn't necessarily have to be pokemon red uh i just would not use them i could only use pokemon that i have never used before so my final team ended up being something like vaporeon uh arbok venomoth who was my fourth i can't even remember the other ones because those are the only ones i actually had to use in the battles <laughs> <laughs> who were my others shit i'm gonna have to like fire it up to look at it i can't even remember who they were Firo was one of them but i didn't that was just that dude was just there for fly um shit i can't remember the other two whatever obviously they weren't relevant but venomoth fucking murdered the elite four basically by itself first person who was you know water slash ice based venomoth murdered him with mega drain Second dude, using rock and fighting types, Mega Drain and Psychic, ruined them. Third one, using ghost types, Psychic, ruined them. Fourth one, didn't ruin them, the dragon types. That's when Vaporeon came into play. And Vaporeon ruined that motherfucker with Ice Beam by itself. And so that's why I mean, like, i pretty sure I only used Vaporeon and Venomoth in the, during the Elite Four. And that really surprised me that Venomoth was that effective. Dude murdered some people. But... Um, one of the Pokemon that I really wanted to use was Beedrill. I really wanted to use Beedrill. And then I looked up his stats. I looked up his moveset. Never mind, Beedrill's going into the box. We're not using this dude. But then I started to play Pokemon Soul Silver. I'm not playing it anymore because now I am home and I have far too many games to play that I have not been able to play yet to go back through very long JRPGs that I've already beaten, already played. There are no surprises for me. Sure, it's fun. But I got other things that my time is better spent with in terms of gaming. But I did start to play Soul Silver, and I looked I looked up Beedrill in that one. I'm actually using him. Dude has really effective bug type moves. There are some effective poison type moves. Now his types are actually useful. Thus, I'm gonna use me some damn Beedrill. Um, but one of the Pokemon that I really, really wanted to use that really surprised me, Onix. I was so excited to use this dude because ever since my childhood I've loved me some Onyx because if for those of you that have seen the anime you know what I'm talking about within the first minute of the anime you were shown Onyx being released from a Pokeball and there is no way your childhood self saw that shit and was not like <gasps> this is so cool there's no way no way Onyx is fucking sick so I tried to use him he's my rock type perfect I need a rock type then I look at his stats. Okay, this isn't very good, but maybe the level ups will make a difference. So I start leveling him up. And I start seeing, like, this is not making a difference. He got fantastic defense. And that's it. <laughs> and so then I compare him to other shit. At level 40, exactly, at level 40, Onyx had less strength, had less attack power than motherfucking Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff. You ever seen that motherfucker? Go Google that bitch. Better yet, don't just Google that bitch. Google the Pokemon Red Sprite of that bitch and tell me that piece of shit deserves to have more attack than this fucking gigantic rock snake. It's supposed to be like 18 feet long or some bullshit. This giant boulder created creature. And it hits with less strength than a fucking Wigglytuff. This motherfucker made it like saltwater taffy or some shit. Get the fuck out of here, man. I'm so mad about that. Oh, I'm losing my shit right now. Oh. All right, calm down. I'm act like I was actually legitimate, legitimately just like, nope. Fuck Onyx. He's gone. Every positive feeling I ever had for this dude is gone. For the rest of my life, he sucks. Even in Pokemon Soul Silver, he sucked. The worst part about it? Even Steelix sucked. 
They gave him an evolution that should have fixed everything. Not only now is this a creature made of goddamn pure rock. Massive, huge, just awesome looking motherfucker. Not only now is he not ma just made of rock, he's made of steel. They even call him Steelix. He gotta have some power behind him. You ever been hit by a freight train made of steel? Of course you haven't. You wouldn't be here. You'd be dead. That's what Steelix should be. He should encapsulate that. No, his attack sucks too. The bit that pissed me right the fuck off. There was a Pokedex entry that was like, this creature is known for tunneling through rock at 50 miles per hour. No. You stop that shit right here, right now. That's bullshit. Any creature powerful enough to burrow straight through goddamn rock at 50 miles an hour is going to annihilate everything in front of them. I could flick a motherfucker and do more damage than Onyx does. Get the fuck out of here. Absolute bullshit. I'm so mad. But so that's what I'm talking about. You, you know, you want to. They have not evolved the base components of their system. That is absolutely true. But you look at all the little things, the changing up so that not every single type was strictly either physical damage or special damage. You now have moves within, you know, like the fire type, for instance. You got Fire Fang versus Ember. Fire Fang does physical damage, Ember does special damage. That kind of thing. So that, you know. Oh, that was another one that I tried to use. I wanted to use Kingler. Krabby slash Kingler. But that was before that split happened, before they made it so that different types had moves within them that could be associated to either stat in pokemon red every single water move was special so you have kingler over here who has an absolutely massive attack stat very enviable attack stat not bad speed wonderful defense and hp but his special stat is like the worst in the game <laughs> terrible and so obviously this motherfucker is useless as a water pokemon but now, Kingler's useful. That attack is useful because now you have water moves that actually are associated with that attack. Uh, poison type. Holy shit. You wanted to use a poison type Pokemon in Pokemon Red? Then you actually tried and you realized, no, you do not want to use a poison type Pokemon. <laughs> There's almost no moves. I was actually very impressed with Arbok's stats. I thought Arbok was quite good. But in terms of his capabilities as a poison type Pokemon... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. that motherfucker didn't learn anything useful there were barely any useful poison type moves and now you have a lot of useful you got stuff like uh poison fang um i can't even think of them actually come to think of it because i've never really used the poison type all that much i just remember that they've made a not a huge amount of new poison moves but enough to make poison an actual type and have it mean something with offense because like otherwise i think like coughing learned smog and smog was fucking awful and grimer learned sludge and sludge was fucking awful and everything else was either poison sting or toxic that was your grand uh coalition of poison type moves so like it's you know the base the foundation of their games has not changed, but they have certainly made a significant amount of improvements. I don't even know, why am I even talking about this? I was just so goddamn mad about Onyx, I had to. Do I even have anything else to talk about? I could talk about Dark Souls 3, but I don't really wanna. I stopped playing it, and I maybe the DLC will draw me back, but honestly, it was not my favorite game in the world. I just, I tried everything. The PvE was fairly unexciting and very sporadic in terms of its actual entertainment value i hated the pvp like from damn near every angle 1v1 dark souls pvp sucks um because there's no reason to actually get hit by anything the by far the best way to play is as a reactive person punishing stupidity so if you have two reactive people trying to punish stupidity you are going to have a staring contest and neither one of you will ever hit the other one ever there is no way for you to surprise somebody if they are themselves are not trying to surprise you if they're trying to wait for your surprises and then punish a poorly executed one 
something may happen. But if you have two people trying to just, you know, play optimally and wait for the other person to make a mistake, you're going to have a staring contest. And I don't think I need to tell you how goddamn boring staring contests are because everybody stops doing them the moment they turn six. Some fucking bullshit. So let's get into invasions. Okay, invasions are actually kind of interesting. The chaotic factor, seed of a giant's tree, all this stuff just making it this massive free-for-all, awesome, fantastic. Could be a lot of fun. But then you have Hornet's Ring. Then you have Dark Moon Blade. Then you have all these things which lead to one shots. And it's like, okay, you're gonna get tagged by this shit. There's no way for you not to get tagged by this shit at some point in time. For it to be an immediate, I don't care if it's devastating. It should hurt, 100% it should hurt. But there's no downside. There's no downside to using the Hornet Ring. The Hornet Ring is arguably the most offensively effective item in the game the most impactful item in terms of the benefit it gets you and yet there's no downside you don't take extra damage while wearing it you don't have something else you know flawed because of it there is literally no downside to it meanwhile you have shit like the clutch rings which don't even goddamn work properly giving you a 15 like was it 10 15 percent damage malice on top of it and yet you're getting like a 5% benefit to that actual damage type when you're playing online? Get the fuck out of here. And again, the Hornet Ring, which allows you to one-shot people, has no drawback to it whatsoever. Parrying itself has almost no drawback to it whatsoever. There is no way for you to reactively punish a parry. You cannot see and notice that, oh, they missed a parry. Now I can punch, unless it's a partial parry and they run themselves out of stamina. But if you're just walking around and you make them think you're about to do a rolling attack and so they throw out a parry, you're not punishing them. Unless you guess that they're going to parry and you time your punish correctly. But it is a guess. It's the same thing I see people talk about all the time. Oh, a person just using parry on you will just run up behind them and backstab them. No problem whatsoever. Except for the smart person who is good at parrying and throws it out there to make the other player think that they're just looking for it, then you go for that backstab and they punch you in the goddamn mouth and kill you for it. Brilliant fucking counteraction that is right there. <laughs> there is no skillful counter to somebody hitting the parry button. It is a guess, pure and simple, to blow up somebody hitting the parry button. There's really, there's no other way around it. That's the only way you can really say it. And... So, I mean, like, there's a numer there's numerous other things you can do. You can try and charge an R2. They throw out the parry, you let the R2 go. It may punish them. But if they don't throw out the parry, now you're sitting there charging an R2, and they could swing at you and hit you out of it. It's a pure guess. And guessing sucks in a game like that, where, again, you're probably going to get one shot for guessing wrong. I don't, want I don't know why I'm getting into this. I don't care about it. Obviously, I care about it a little bit, but I moved on. I'm done with Dark Souls. It is actually inside the case on the shelf. It's not even out roaming around with all the other games. I have Pokin goddamn tournament out with my collection of games because I have I feature um any games that I am quote unquote done with. I put up on the shelf normally. Uh, they're all you know depending upon which system they're for. They're all organized correctly in alphabetical order and stuff like that it's all nice and pretty and it looks wonderful and it's organized properly then you have the games that i have not played yet that i haven't been able to finish whatever they're just stacked in this random jumble of boxes off to the side near my tv if it just basically exists to say hey remember me you should play me at some point in time pokin fucking tournament is with that shit i don't even have a wii u but dark souls 3 is away so why am I talking about Dark Souls 3? It's done. It's over with. I'm out. They actually had a resurgence of Dark Souls, the original Dark Souls activity. And I should try to get into it on PC. I should look into whether or not I can actually capture it on PC. The problem, I don't think I can. I do not think I can. Like, my PC can absolutely run Dark Souls. That's unquestionable. But whether or not it can run Dark Souls and capture at the same time, I don't think it can do it. I, it's, just, it's a basic laptop it's not a bad laptop but it's not an amazing laptop either so it's it will probably be stretched too thin in order to effectively run dark souls without frame drops and stuff like that happening and maybe there'll be 
issues with the capture even then. Um, and I can't play it on Xbox 360 because my Xbox Gold ran out. And obviously I have no reason, no good reason, to uh, reestablish that subscription. It's just it's not worth the $50 to maybe play Dark Souls for a month and then everybody moves on, moves back on from it again. So I, kinda, I wish I could uh, get into it and record it. Because I never got into the online portion of that shit, and I would like to. I would. I just generally played offline most of the time when I played the original Dark Souls, and I think I would like, again, getting into because the invasions of Dark Souls have their own problems. I've watched videos from every single version of the games now, um, and Dark Souls had its own problems with the constant backstab fishing and stuff like that. But I think that it was, despite that, it was still more diverse and interesting than anything I've seen out of Dark Souls Three so far. So. It's a shame that, you know, my Xbox, my subscription didn't last for an extra four months for free or something like that. But anyway, uh, was there anything fighting game related I wanted to talk about? Let's talk about Street Fighter. Can we shit on Street Fighter for a bit? I really need to shit on Street Fighter. Because I'm getting sick of it. I was a staunch defender of the game for a while. It's a good game. It really, like, you cannot really... Aside from subjective, opinionated-based faults with the game, you can't really disagree with the fact that the base gameplay of Street Fighter V is very solid, and it's a good game. Now, obviously, you can argue the modes all you want. You can argue the flaws with the DLC plan all you want, all that shit. I'm not even going to get into it anymore. I don't care about it anymore. And But they, are, they have finally hit the point where now they're on... Now I'm on the negativity side over it all. Like again, I, for a long time I was just like whatever, you know, it's a fucking fighting game. The fighting aspect of it is perfectly fine. Thus, that's all I care about. Thus, it's a perfectly fine game for me and you can't like all these people that try to pretend like anybody that enjoys this game is a shitty person ruining the video game industry are ridiculous. But now it's just like a bookie delayed story mode not coming out for until the very end of june and yet here they are showcasing to us a fully completed abuki the fucking day after we hear that abuki is delayed into june a fully functional and playable abuki the day after they say oh sorry she's delayed for unforeseen uh problems again no specifics there probably aren't any problems you know what the problem probably is the Zenny shop. They didn't want to release another character and allow people to get that extra fight money from doing her trials and doing her story mode and doing all that shit for free. They're going to wait for the Zenny shop so people have to buy her properly and not just get another free character. There's nothing wrong with the character. That's scummy as fuck, and that's the only reason I can see why they delayed her. So again, scummy as fuck. We're already starting there. And then they're saying, oh yeah, story mode's coming out near the end of June. We need that time. And then at E3... They show us a fully playable version of the story mode. Now, here's the kicker. Not only do they do that, not only do they show us that story mode is fully functional and fully playable and still not out for whatever fucking stupid business reason they have going on, they show us a fully playable Balrog. Another DLC character that is fully functional and playable at this moment that is not going to get released until at least August, if he's even the August character. Are you fucking kidding me with that? Like, how could you make so many business-related missteps in a row without somebody stepping in and being like, dude, people are going to fucking murder us over this if we keep doing this. We cannot keep just not giving any details whatsoever as to why something is getting delayed and then show that exact something working exactly as it should and being fully functional and something that could be in the player's hands right now and instead that we are feeding them this bullshit that nobody is going to trust, nobody is going to actually believe and they're just going to roll their eyes and get even less and less faith with us until we hit rock fucking bottom and nobody believes a single goddamn word out of our mouths anymore. How do they not see this? And so just after all of that, I can't say anything good about Street Fighter anymore. I can't. 
There is nothing good going on. They have hit from the business angle of things. They are now worse in my mind than Arc System works. Keep in mind how fucking hypercritical I am to the point of nitpicking about Arc System works because I'm so goddamn sick of their bullshit at this point in time. And yet now I'm even madder at Capcom. How hard is that to do? How bad do you have to make yourself look? It's terrible. It's awful. And the fact they expect me to remain a loyal customer when they have shown me nothing but distrust, disrespect, and treated us like we don't matter. Your paychecks depend upon our enjoyment of your product. Your paychecks, your livelihood, everything that you love doing, maybe you don't even love doing it, but everything that you are currently doing in your life is fully dependent upon the continued loyalty of your fan base. And you have done nothing but spit in the faces of everybody who has tried to defend your game, your company. And how can anybody still do it? After all this time, after this Abuki thing, where again, it's not only that they delayed her. It's not only, you know, it's not just the fact that they delayed her at the last goddamn minute too. It's the fact that they delayed her told us that they delayed her for unforeseen circumstances and then the next fucking day gave us a full character showcase of the character completely playable apparently flawless and you gonna fucking tell us that she needed to be delayed for a month fuck you that's all i can say fuck you and i am gonna end it on that note of negativity because Fuck everything that Capcom is. And unless they make some major goddamn changes, I may just abandon ship on Street Fighter V entirely because it's not something that deserves advertisement as little as it is from my end of things. Obviously, I'm not getting millions of views. I am not changing, you know, a majority opinion about anything. I don't have the viewership for that. But even a little bit, is more than they deserve at the moment. So I am ending on that note. Change something.